Hi, welcome on uh, Interventional Cardiovascular Surgery on PCR Online. My name is Pamela Gassa, I'm Interventional Cardiologist uh, in Milan. Today I'm interviewing uh, Professor Falk, Cardiac Surgeon in Berlin, and Dr. Dijan Mila Milazinovic, Interventional Cardiologist from Belgrade. We will talk about uh, the revived BTAS2 trial presenting, presented during the EC Congress in Barcelona. This trial comes into play, suggesting reflections and raising many questions about the management of ischemic heart failure and potentially changing the game for the interventional options. Let's listen to the experts. Professor Falk, what were your first thoughts and feelings when the findings from Revived were presented at the ESC 2022? Well, there's two notions. One is that um, it's a disappointment in a sense that we uh, strongly believe that intervention uh, should uh, help ischemia and thus prevent mortality also in the heart failure population with coronary artery disease. Now, my second notion is that it doesn't come as a surprise because we had have had similar outcomes in the past. There's two large meta-analysis, the last one published in 2020 by uh, um, Gaudino, which showed that in 7,000 patients, um, we had a similar outcome, that PCI is not affecting mortality uh, as opposed to bypass surgery. And in, in that sense, um, the revived trial is confirming the evidence that we already had uh, in the field. And um, but still, it is a little bit puzzling to see that um, there was no good outcome for PCI. Well, uh, my first thought was that actually these results from the revived trial align very well with what have we previously known about the effect of PCI on mortality in patients with chronic coronary syndromes. And that is that the effect of PCI on mortality is um, not uh, in, in the way that we maybe would have liked it. So it does not really reduce mortality in these patients. And uh, the fact that these patients also had reduced ejection fraction did not change this lack of effect of PCI on mortality in chronic coronary syndromes. And then uh, the second thought that I had was that it was really interesting to see that uh, the concept of hibernating myocardium that will tell us that by revascularization, we would be able uh, to make the heart function better did not really work in the revived trial, but it not really work in the stitch trial either, which was positive for revascularization in the long term. So these two thoughts were actually uh, the first one that came to my mind after hearing the results of the revived trial in Barcelona just this past um, August. Thank you. Let's, let's go forward. In stitch trials, the surgical revascularization had a mortality benefit over medical treatment. There was no such benefit of PCI versus medical treatment in revived. Does that mean that surgery is superior to angioplasty in ischemic cardiomyopathy? How do you interpret these results? Yeah, well, we have to take into consideration the time when stitch was performed. Uh, and it was a completely different uh, treatment for heart failure then. So the medical treatment that was uh, very uh, contemporary in the revived trial, including uh, a 90% use of ARNIs, was not available in the STITCH trial. And hence, the results are not directly comparable. I think one of the shortcomings of both trials, uh, STITCH and revived, is the fact that they are only two arm trials. So a criticism to STITCH has always been that no PCI arm was included then. And likewise, uh, REVIVED is lacking a cabbage arm. So the results of the two trials indicate a benefit of cabbage, but at the same time, they do not answer the question if cabbage is superior to PCI in patients with uh, severely impaired ventricular function and uh, severe coronary artery disease. One of, I think, uh, important things and uh, when interpreting the revived trial in the context of the previously performed stitch trial is to understand uh, two key findings. The first is there is a lack on, of, of mortality benefit by PCI at the roughly three year follow up, which is what has been published so far in the revived trial. And then there was long term benefit at 10 years 
um, in the stitch trial conferred by uh, by cabbage by surgical revascularization. Now, uh, two things need I think to be clear. First, that this uh, lack of mortality benefit, as was already said uh, from the side of the PCI, has been proven in trials like ischemia or even FAME2 trials. There was no effect on, on, on mortality by PCI in those trials either. However, there was a signal uh, that uh, PCI may reduce spontaneous myocardial infarction. And interestingly enough, this was also the case in the REVIVE trial, as was in the ischemia trial and in the FAME2 trial. So I think that is uh, worth noting, as well as that in the REVIVED trial, in those patients who had ICD, there was a decrease in malignant uh, ventricular tachycardia with PCI as opposed to medical therapy. Now, these two findings tell at least me that uh, we need to be more careful and selective in whom we offer percutaneous revascularization. That is, we need to choose uh, the lesions that we treat, the patients in whom we implant stents and the time that we perform this PCI better than we have had in the past. Okay, thank you. And now to conclude, which is your take on a revived BCIS2? Will this change your practice uh, from today? Well, as a cardiac surgeon, I don't do PCI, so it won't change my personal practice. But what it certainly uh, uh, does is it, it changes the way we discuss patients with impaired LV function. And we have to very be, be very careful on how we advise patients to undergo either PCI or cabbage in the in the setting of uh, severely impaired uh, uh, LV function. And uh, so I do think that we will be a little bit more restrictive when it comes for, to the recommendation of PCI, and uh, uh, which doesn't mean that every patient should undergo cabbage. I think we have to once more delegate this decision to a very good heart team. Uh, that uh, finds the best treatment for uh, every patient? I, I probably won't change entirely my practice. I, I'd be a bit more hesitant in, uh, in uh, performing PCI now in patients with a heart failure, with use ejection fraction, now that we have these results out as well. But as said uh, in, the, in the last question, I think that the key message is uh, that we need to be, we need to find ways to select those patients in whom we are going to achieve benefit with PCI. But let me give you two more, uh, two more points that I think are important when interpreting the revived trial results in light of the stitch trial. The first point is the control groups in the both arms were not really the same. So the heart failure therapy evolved over time and the mortality was much greater in this control group of the stitch trial than it was in the control group of the revived trial meaning that the bar was higher for PCI than was for cabbage when you think of the, of the, of the benefit that you can see in uh, terms of statistics and of a randomized trial. And then uh, the second point, and I uh, would like to highlight this, is that uh, in the stage trial, when you analyze mode of that, that is when you try to understand how cabbage was making the mortality benefit, it was um, in many respects due to sudden cardiac death. Now, ICD implantation rate was much lower in the stitch trial than in the revived trial, meaning that those patients were protected better in the revived trial that benefited the most from revascularization in the stitch trial. And as said earlier, PCI was able to uh, reduce the rate of malignant arrhythmia in the revived trial, meaning that the revascularization does seem to have an effect. Now, since this was a trial about reduced ejection fraction, but also chronic coronary syndromes, once again, we come to the point which I think is the most important one. We need to be able to use the knowledge from intracoronary imaging and physiology and all guidance that we can and choose our patients wisely in whom to whom we would offer percutaneous revascularization in chronic coronary syndromes. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. It was a great pleasure.